some news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is December 17th, 2021. Pretty much the Christmas episode. Pretty much. The time is 3.30. On time as usual. And I am joined here today by chat. Remember chat. Remind you. Context. Where is it at? Remember, when we're applying the community guidelines, we okay. very specifically take context and intent into account. This is a very special episode where we're going to have to keep that in mind. Remember how often that's been applied in the past? Never. So don't say anything stupid, all right? Because your context or intent won't matter. Actually, your intent does matter because I know what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do, all right? So don't say, okay. Ah! <laughs> Fucking smart ass. Christmas episode, we have some snacks with cheese. Mm, fuck. <laughs> Pleb. Ah, well. Ooh. I hope you guys are ready. Because 2022 is right around the corner. And you know what that means. That means it's time to get some NFTs in your games. That's right. We know how much everyone loves NFTs. Right? <laughs> just, just blem. Just blem. Fine. Just blem. All right. Uh, even Amazon and it tees nuts. Oh, I love right clicking them. Is that a cartoon on screen? That's right. That's right. You can NFT anything, mint anything for the low, low price of $70 to $300. Uh, but first, 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 listen. NFTs right now, it's a bit of a Wild West thing, right? People out there trying to scam people. Legit stuff happening, but mostly scams. As with any new and emerging technology, there's always people jumping on it, trying to make a quick buck, whether or not they fuck someone over, right? But something you guys should understand is that it's probably something that's not going to go anywhere. And here's the reason why. Because a small percentage of people out there in every industry will pay for it, thus making it worth the investment for whatever industry it is, whatever industry investor is involved. So, so the same way that we were like microtransactions in a box product, get out of here. Remember free to play, get out of here. Cash shop. What? Why would I use why would I use it pay in cash app when I when I bought the game? And now it's commonplace. It's commonplace for a 60, 70, 80, 90 dollar game to be sold and still have some kind of extra money you could throw at it later on. Back when we were young and dumb, that's right. All of all all of you guys and myself with our web two brains gotta put on the web three thinking caps start looking at this shit fourth dimensionally right day one dlc on the disc dlc shit like that right so we thought that was never gonna go anywhere but guess what people open their wallets they open their wallets and they pay for these things now maybe you didn't or maybe i didn't but that doesn't matter because 99 percent of the people don't have to do it so long as that one percent does then it's worth it so my experiences with nfts started in may of this year soon to be last year in may of this year i decided to go ahead and try it try it just just so i could understand how it works okay and even though i have i have gone through the steps to do it uh I still am not 100% sure how it works. <laughs> I know, but at the same time, there's a lot to learn, right? Because I recognize this as a technology that could have value, but 
I'm not going to preach to you that you have to accept it now or be left behind, old man, because that's a fucking tech bro, some tech bro bullshit, some crypto shit. You know, those guys on fucking Twitter, I have, I have, I have, I have industry acquaintances, we'll call them, right, who are tr tripping over themselves to tell everybody, if you don't believe NFTs, you're an idiot. And it's such the wrong way to fucking do it. It's a new technology, man. You gotta, you gotta handhold, you gotta handhold a little bit. Bring people in. Like I said, I've already done it. And I still don't understand why it's shit and why people are doing it. But the technology, in terms of not necessarily like right-clicking and saving an image, because what people don't understand is you can NFT basically anything, right? But the technology has a use case in the future. Just like microtransactions in your box products. So I did sell the item to uh, to 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 my my biggest fan, and who also I happen to be his biggest fan. Top, thank you, top. Uh, <laughs> but we ended up canceling the transaction because when I went to go and actually uh, uh, finish the sale, confirm the sale, um, it told me that I had to pay three hundred and fifty dollars. Now my Actual fee, uh, let me see, accept a bid. I'm going to grab this accept a bid here. My actual fee, or sorry, my actual uh, selling price was $412. So minus the 2.5% open C fee. So $402 point, you know, and, th and 38 cents. So it's 0 0.9, it's 0 0.0975. Oh my God. It's so close to fucking 0 0.075. 0 0.0975. <laughs> was supposed to be my earnings, right? Which is like you know, like three hundred bucks, something like that, right? Um, but then you then you lose it all on fucking miners' fees, and now Top has like wrapped Ethereum, which is a conversion you have to do in order to move Ethereum into a, I guess, a transmittable or exchangeable currency, right? And some of this I may be fucking up. But now, because Top already went through the process of converting his currency, his cryptocurrency, into a cryptocurrency he can actually use, now he's stuck with it. Unless, unless, of course, you want to. Oh, sure. I was going to say, I was going to say, unless. Yeah, he said, he said, I appreciate it. Pulled it by now. I was going to say, unless you want to buy, like, some apes or some shit, right? Yeah, he had a fee. He had a fee. It was, it was outrageous, the fees involved with trying to do this. And this was in May, right? Now, what I've heard today uh, is that. It costs to mint, which is the process that we're talking about here, taking an item, turning it into an NFT, and then you go to the process of selling it, which has more fees and all that shit. But just to mint, which is to create the actual NFT itself, the token, um, uh, it costs like 7200 bucks or something like that, right? And it depends on where you go. But there's a lot of sites popping up saying that they'll mint your shit if you, you know, pay whatever the fee is. So... So it's wildly expensive right now, wildly expensive. Uh, and it's wildly abused. So I've been part of uh, Twitter Spaces beta for about a month or something now, right? Um, Twitter Spaces is like Clubhouse. And if you're not familiar with Clubhouse, you guys know uh, Discord's um, priority speaker feature. So imagine an entire platform designed around that, where you have a priority speaker, everyone else is listening, and you have one priority speaker. Kind of like streaming, except that you can just you know, click on somebody's name and then they could come up and they can speak as well. So I've, I've, I've gone to tons of spaces. I've spoken at tons of spaces, um, just related to random shit, mostly around photography, couple games, not a lot of games presence there. It seems to be like the spaces are typically uh, mostly overrun by people who are interested in crypto, whether it's NFTs or anything like that. Um, team speak, priority speaker, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll go back. <laughs> Lectures, sure. Yeah, wow, we could go, we could go all the way back, guys. You know? <laughs> Stumping, right? <laughs> Up on the podium. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Like all those things. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what I've learned is that people are really excited about this thing, and some of them are so full of shit that even the people who are full of shit are over their shit. Like, there's, like, tears to the to the bullshit that even people who are bullshitting, 
They can't deal with it. I've been in rooms where somebody gets up and they start preaching about some kind of coin, some kind of shit coin, or some kind of NFT drop they're gonna do, or come to this site, we're doing airdrops all over the place, you're gonna get a bunch of free stuff, and this is emerging, what other stuff, right? And they get kicked out because somebody else was like, nah, none of that bullshit. But then they show their own stuff. Now that being said, there's a lot of people who are like legitly trying to use this as a form of making revenue as an artist, especially photographers, right? Or just artists in general. Let me go and open up. Let me go and open up OpenSea. OpenSea is pretty much the number one site right now for, for this. Let me go and open up OpenSea. So OpenSea, <clears throat> let me go to explore. Uh, we'll go to, let me see, art. We'll go to art top. I don't know if it's going to load or anything. I want to check it first before we show because you don't know, you don't know what people are going to be NFTing, man. You know, they might just, and I've seen some just things that you can't show on Twitch. <laughs> people are trying to sell. Are those tears in pyramid shape? I know, huh? Uh, it looks like expopency is down. <laughs> it's not loading for me. <laughs> so anyways, um, <laughs> I was going to show you this. Uh, I have another site actually uh, on tap. Let me go and grab that one real quick. Um, but OpenSea, sorry. Um, there we go. Let me see. This one's Sloika. Sloika is a uh, Russian based where you, they use uh, another kind of form of coin called Gasha. I gotcha, I guess. Uh, well, sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Fuck. They use Ethereum. Um, you get a random edition, uh, one, one piece from the series for a fixed price. So yeah, this is a single item. So this is uh, a picture somebody took uh, and it says, uh, each Holly depicts a distinctive moment for of the week long festival of the Lothmar Holly in India. So, <clears throat> OpenSea is close, I know. <laughs> is it still? <laughs> Look at that. It's actually down. How funny. <laughs> they took their money and ran. Uh, better to sell yourself on Etsy as an artist, an honest transaction. Okay. This is selling for 0.25 Ethereum, right? If th that's $1,000, okay? Give or take. It depends on the time of day, okay? It could be $700. It could be $1,200, all right? So give or take. Okay. So this, this person... This is a real person, a real photographer selling this piece, okay? At least we can assume that it is. We'll talk about that later. Uh, they're offering it up for $1,000. If somebody buys that, then there's value there, right? Then then you could say that this person's work is worth $1,000, right? Now, there's scams where you could just open up another wallet and then pay for it. The transaction yourself using a smurf account and then turn around and be like whoa i sold this thing for seven hundred dollars and then the next person could be like whoa snap this guy's money this guy's stuff's worth seven hundred dollars it's too easy to scam it's too easy to scam right now there's very little regulation that goes into this like i said i assume that this picture belongs to this person that's selling it but that doesn't necessarily mean that this picture belongs to this person that's selling it and not to just some other random person on the internet right you can just Google image search that shit. Um, fuck, OpenSea's still down. I love it. Good. <laughs> Although, no, no, not good. Because I have the collection I'm supposed to show you. Anyways, anyways. So, NFTs really, really, really are like picking up steam. Okay? Um, <clears throat> we're starting to see it bleed over into gamer shit. Which is why we're talking about it. Actually, we talk about it anyways because it's technology stuff. But... Um, Except NFTs aren't transferable, therefore, uh, who can? How can it have intrinsic value? Are they not transferable? If I say that you own this image, and I have, a, and you have a receipt that says you own the image, whatever the details are, whether it's I gave you the rights, or I gave the physical copy, or I destroyed the physical copy, or I maintained the physical copy and I maintained the rights, I dictate what your rights are, and you agree to those rights by buying the NFT, right? That's what it is. So if I say I retain the rights and I don't transfer the rights over to the person who purchases it, then it's still mine, even if they purchase it. All NFTs are handled differently. Like I said, NFTs come in all shapes and sizes. People only see, oh, I can right click on an image and save it. That's all they see, okay? What they don't see is the other applications. And I would show you again, but OpenSea's down. We'll check in in a second. Uh, <clears throat> but will it hold up in court? We don't know. We don't know. It's not been challenged yet, but we're getting really fucking close. Really fucking close. I've seen artists complain that others are selling NFTs of their work. That's right. I've just seen artists saying that they've been other people selling their work. That's right. I have some of those coming up in just a minute. 
I did my research. We got it. We got it. We got it. Is it right or right? Exactly. Well, we don't know. But <clears throat> we know they're starting to leak over the video game shit because we've seen it pop up in games. One second. Like Good Gamer Takes says, coming back to remind you all that the ultimate Good Gamer Take is telling NFT advocates to get fucked. No NFTs in games, just like no NFTs anywhere. Thanks for reading. Have a lovely Christmas. So for me, this is a boomer take, okay? At maybe, maybe a year ago, it would have been different, okay? But after spending time in this fucking space, <laughs> I can tell you that's a boomer take, okay? It's like, it's like when a rumor on TikTok that something dangerous is going to happen at schools today happens or doesn't happen, right? The rumor itself. And then all, and then half the school is fucking close, okay? It's a fucking boomer reaction. Can't just umbrella like that. It's like, you can't, you cannot, you cannot. So, Kind of a bad boomer gamer takes. How's that? I know a lot of you guys agree with the sentiment. Okay. Which is why I'm here. I'm here just to show you the bad and the good. Well, it's mostly bad, but I'm here to show you what it is. And then you, after that, you can decide if you don't like it and that's fine. Totally fine. Um, get off my lawn, Jake's Kane. Yeah. <laughs> I see multiple senators talking about the regulation hammer coming down on crypto and NFTs. Yeah. When's the last time you've seen senators actually doing anything? Okay. Uh, it has been a, th a thing for centuries if you think about it. Coins can be duplicated, but saying that a certain place made them when they didn't is fraud. Mm -hmm. Gotta find diamond in the rough. That's true. That's true. So, <clears throat> one thing to note is that it's already happening. Okay? Fuck me. Of course it's not fucking working. What is wrong with this shit? I wonder if it's my... Uh, nope, it's not... Nope. Okay. Yeah. Well, open is actually down. Of course. I have so many things linking to it. Ah, perfect. I got, I have a backup I have a backup. So, um, this is, this is a game called sandbox. Okay. Now sandbox is a metaverse game, uh, where you can, uh, basically buy NFTs and then place them within your world. You can, um, sell them to other people it plays like a regular game right ish more of a sandbox thing uh and they have a huge yeah no sandbox i know they have a huge collection of items as you can see right here on OpenSea. massive collection of items that you could purchase here for the game <laughs> but in this space did once exist <laughs> hundreds upon hundreds of furniture, lampposts, cooking things, like little voxel pieces of art that you could purchase for as little as 10 to 20 to 100 to a thousand dollars. See, it's right here. It's right here. It's the emperor's new clothes, guys. Come on. All right. All right. You see? You understand? You understand? Just be like, ooh, wow. Ooh, wow. Uh, and then it'll come back uh, later. But as was mentioned before, so so real quick, these, <clears throat> this game and many others like it are, think like Second Life, okay? But like more modernized using a, using cryptocurrency and NFTs as their main way of keeping players enticed to keep playing, right? I know that there's a couple people in this community who, wow, ooh, there you guys, you guys got it. I know there's a few people in this community who play Second Life and they actually make a living off of playing Second Life uh, or other games by selling things that they, they, they farm in game. This is taking that same concept except allowing you to sell those items for real money, right? Um, <clears throat> so... This, that's where NFTs come in with these like pay, no, uh, pay to play, no, uh, uh, play to earn, play to earn games where you play the game in order to collect things and you could turn around and you could sell it like the, like the Diablo three real money auction house. Yes. That's a, that's an app comparison. You could get a drop. And then if you like it, you could turn around and sell it 
for real money auction house money, right? It is very similar to that. Yeah, except it's centralized, right? Well, technically decentralized. But I mean, like, you could go to a site like OpenSea and you could sell it right here. Wow. <gasps> All right. <laughs> but what I will say, though, uh, sorry, so just to go back on, on the uh, the comment about theft, it is, theft is happening. And it's happening often enough that, like, you could search for a name of a popular artist and probably find multiple pieces on there that don't belong to the artist. Um, so here's one. Someone is selling my Minecraft screenshots as an NFT. How's your morning going? Here's somebody who's selling... The link to NFT. This is part of DeviantArt. DeviantArt has a system in place that will automatically search for, you know, uh, uh, people posting your shit elsewhere. I, I, I guess. I guess. Uh, I've not used it. I should fire up my old DeviantArt account and find out. But this person was actually hit multiple times. God damn it. There's another one. Um, and these are these are being sold. Whether or not they sell doesn't matter. But these are being sold. Um, not with permission of the artist. As long as the game has a centralized server architecture, there's no need for the items being NFT. You mean like CSGO skins, right? Right? Fair. 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 Like Fortnite skins, right? Centralized. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. So what actions can the artists take against this? DMCA against the marketplace? Well, if the artist has the right, uh, the owns the rights, which they typically do. Not, not the, I'm not talking about the sellers or the buyers, right? Uh, well, they can go and, and try, but as this person details... They were expected, there's actually screenshots in here, they're expected to fill out forms that include their personal information, and then OpenSea says, we may need to forward this complaint and any other complaints to the seller, so they have further details regarding this action. So random person who, who, who Googles your image or finds your portfolio, your DeviantArt profile or whatever, and then start saving them and posting them. Uh, right click save as and then post them. Well now, in order for an artist to fight it, they have to provide their information so the person who is uh, uh, who is selling it can then use it. So you're basically, yeah, you're just doxing yourself. So you say uh, same issue with YouTube DMCA. Um, YouTube hasn't, I have, I have fought a number of things uh, and I fought a person, you know, back in the day, um, and as far as I know, I don't remember if they got my actual personal information, but regardless, it's true. It's true. Yeah. The, the personal information can indeed be shared also through the YouTube DNCA. Um, so if you're an artist trying to get your shit back and somebody's stealing it, you have to tell them where you live. <laughs> but the reality is that you can just use your, uh, your email address and they just, just, make up the rest of the shit. You don't really have to, okay? Um, <clears throat> so it says here, I'm not gonna see any contact details so that you may share with the owner of a bot. However, here's this blah, blah, blah. So they basically submitted all the information saying that it was theirs, proof and everything. Uh, and then it says, we follow DMCA requirements in order to take further action. We will need additional required information. Here's an example that contains the requirements. And so the example notice, fake address and all that shit in there. So, and then it keeps happening. As it says, it keeps happening. This person is getting ripped off left and right. And then that's pretty much it. So, and then they're stuck unless they want to give their personal information out. Just schedule a fighting match with them and uh, uh, and fisty cuff it out. Would watermarks on 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 them tell sold work for artists? Not really. Yes, yeah, just 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 grab it, man. It's cool. What's up? What's up? It's fine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, watermarks not really help too much. Plus, like, I mean, as an artist myself, like, I don't want to put watermarks on my shit. Like, you know, across the middle or something like that. Like, I just think it looks tacky. Like, I want to put my shit out there. I don't want to sit there and and worry about, you know, or have that, like, just in in everyone's face, my name across the, the 
the top or whatever metadata <clears throat> there's ways to hide your watermark but that's not going to matter when somebody screenshots it <laughs> plus that stuff's pretty easy to remove uh here's something actually uh jordan just showed me this i wish i had this at the beginning of the day it'd been really great if because uh, <laughs> it would have made it a lot easier to put this episode together for with some of these examples so it says have you seen tweets about stolen nfts crypto scams or plain old bad ideas and thought geez how is that whole web 3 thing going on or going check out my new project so she says web 3 is going great and this site has a lot of stories it's kind of like pretty nicely just kind of keeps everything consolidated here so you go through and see the history of of web3 nfts crypto all that stuff from somebody who is um an expert in the subject this person is the software engineer and a wikipedia editor <laughs> i think it's a job <laughs> i think it's a job but molly also got hit with a text from somebody who proved that they did, they were indeed the owner of this particular NFT that she used on her site and her banner. And it says, I believe you're using my ape on your website without my permission. Can you please prove you own this ape as I believe there's only one looking like this and it is mine. So <clears throat> this ape right here in question, um, and she actually details it in her site on, on her blog. Um, they board ape number 5262. This goes to OpenSea, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> It's just gonna be down the whole time. <laughs> so yes, the the owner of Board Ape number five two six two of which his site header is a derivative work contacts me on Twitter saying I believe you're using it. So it, so it says, um, it says an event that truly transcends parody. While this would be hilarious even if it was a prank, the Twitter account who DM me does appear to belong to the person holding NFT on OpenSea. So. I mean, hopefully they, she changed it. That would be the right thing to do. But yeah, that's fine. I uh, wait for some furry artist to flip their lid over stolen NFT stuff. Oh, it's already happened. Oh yeah, there's there was a there was a furry collage, uh, being sold on uh, uh on OpenSea. I would show you, but you know what's gone. <laughs> but it's gone and it actually sold. <sighs> nice art. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I changed the color cap to to off yellow. Well, well, listen. So Molly White, Molly White took a picture that she found on the internet and she used it in her header. Uh, she took a picture she did not own and she used it in her header of her site, right? Technically, that's against the rules. We've already seen, we've all gotten in trouble. We use some picture or something that gets content ID matched. It's like, oh, you can't show this thing because it belongs to someone else, whatever, right? That person to give you the rights to do it. Everyone used to, remember we used to go to Google image search and just copy whatever. Well, she did that and she got busted. So she should take it down because she's in the wrong. Because even if she made joke that it was sent by somebody who owns a bored ape, which is a fucking joke. Yes, it's true. Okay. I'm sorry. You buy a bored ape fucking thing. Just, oh, God damn it. Oh, these stupid fucking avatars. And I can't even show you the collection. Um, but if she's. If she's gonna if she's gonna rally against this and she's gotta follow the rules too, man. You can sell an NFT freshly minted that is counterfeit of a prior NFT, which is levels of stupid. Well, I mean, you can't. You can do a lot of stuff. You could do a lot of stuff. It's a very unregulated market right now. Regulation will come internally first because people will stop using it, or there'll be threat of federal uh, or government's uh, uh, intervention in terms of regulation, and then they'll be then they'll force themselves to go and put in some kind. Um, so that stuff is coming right now. It's super early, guys. Like this is really early. This stuff is all. It's just that's why that's why they all look like scams. That's why people like Molly just view and, and bad gamer takes right. Like they just sorry, it's good gamer takes. I didn't really mean to do that, <laughs> but this is why they look at these things and they make you know Web three is going great to fucking. To like make fun of it or whatever but you know i mean the internet does evolve eventually and whether or not you want to hang out and check it out and see what's new and what's coming like windows 12 or some shit or the next fucking iphone the next os update the next cupcake or whatever the fuck android's calling their shit yet now <laughs> sorry sorry I'm android whatever fuck <laughs> federal intervention nfp has got to wait at least five years for that they will outsource it to some weird russian servers or something where u.s law has no meaning it's true it's true it's true um well, we're three over NFTs. So, again, let's try one more time. Yeah, wow. The whole time. Well, NFTs in every industry. Stan Lee came back from the dead to shill an NFT. Boy, I knew he'd be back, man, making a cameo. Just like he does 
From championing diverse, championing diversity to embracing new tech, Stan was one step ahead of the curve. To honor his innovative spirit, Stan's first Indian hero, Chakra the Invincible, debuts in his own NFT. I thought this pandemic was World of 3, wouldn't it be World of 4? EA Foundations. Shocker, but if NFT host dies like OpenSea, what are you going to do with your forever loading NFT? Well, OpenSea doesn't host themselves. Google hosts them. Uh, I believe uh, Google servers host everything on OpenSea, which is why if you have a DMCA takedown request, you send it to Google. You don't send it to OpenSea because OpenSea clearly is not going to help you, but Google will help you. So if you have a takedown request, send it to Google. That's how you do it. But if the NFT host dies and you lose your piece of art, I don't know. I mean, your your receipt still exists. You probably right click and save the image. You could still say you own it, whether or not it exists anywhere. Everybody focuses on the images because that's the easiest thing, right? Or the art like this, because it's the easiest thing to monetize. But I'm telling you guys, the gaming stuff is going to be where the money's at. As with everything, the gaming stuff is going to be where it's at. <sighs> Like Peter Molyneux. Peter Molyneux sold $40 million worth of NFTs selling space for his game Legacy that has not been released yet. Land, I should say. Sorry, virtual land. Right? And Legacy is a game where you can get in and build a business or build a house or whatever. Um, and you can provide some kind of commerce to the other inhabitants of, of the world or of the verse. Right? Peter Molyneux hasn't been where it's at since 2005. <laughs> Fable 2. <laughs> Another Molyneux game that's... that's uh, We'll never be finished. Well, you can't even get me to kickstart another game uh, with his name on it. Yep. Scam, 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 scam. This is the new Amway. <laughs> NFT ET game cartridges. But listen, like I said, like I said, it doesn't matter what the majority think. It matters what the minority's wallet says. Okay? Just like everything else in the world. Right? So while all of us look at this and we say, can we just make a game? Can we just make a cool sandbox game or something? Other people look at it and say, how do we shoehorn NFTs into this so we can make a ton of money, right? Um, <clears throat> example, another example, Ubisoft announced, they had an NFT announcement, more than 95% dislikes on YouTube. I believe this is at the last moment before they removed dislikes. Hi, my name is Ubisoft. Exactly. And they have this fancy little video to go along with it with it while they're talking, where they uh, show what an NFT is. Kind of like a, uh, uh, just kind of like a crash course for a lot of people, right? And it tells you, it says, you can, oh, playable and energy efficient. Energy efficient. Ubisoft. <laughs> so they're calling them digits, Right. The whole reason YouTube removed the downvote visibility. Exactly. So the example here, Tom Clancy. So they're showing that you can get this, like an example, a unique one of a kind mask that's serial numbered, meaning there's more than one, but the one with your number on it is unique to you. Limited editions. <laughs> Here's your engraved serial. There it is. That makes it mine. It's got four digits on it. So it's probably at least 10,000 of those. One or 200,000. Exactly. <laughs> so th this is a great one. This, this, you could replace all the NFT and crypto related uh, jargon here with CSGO skin related jargon. And it would totally make sense to anybody. That's what it is. It's just, it's, it's, it's buying CSGO skins, but you could take them anywhere, right? You own them no matter where you're at, which is dumb because you can't use them anywhere. Uh, is this that there aren't many girls out there like me? Me? Yes. Um, 
<laughs> so it says launching this week in beta with PC version Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, it will enable players to acquire digits, which are collectible in game vehicles, weapons, and pieces of equipment. Digits will be released as part of limited editions, each made up of a fixed number of cosmetic items. Ubisoft said, Digits are a new way to experience cosmetic items, combining the fun of playing with AAA quality assets and the thrill of owning NFTs that represent unique collectible pieces of Ubisoft game worlds. At most, you're going in the at most for the foreseeable future, your NFT is going to li live in a gallery on Ubisoft's website. Kind of like when you go to Steam and you go and look at your your inventory. That's where it will exist. So imagine if you paid real money for something on Steam and it just exists in your inventory because maybe you don't play the game anymore. Like, what's the use of it? There's no, maybe you could sell it. You could sell it. So that's kind of a benefit, right? Kind of a benefit. Like if you don't play a game anymore and you want to sell some cosmetics on a lot of games, you can't. Right? But you can if it's an NFT. So it's game, but they say it's cooler. That's right. They say it's cooler. And because they're the ones that are selling them and not some third party site, CSGO Lotto or anything like that, they're on board and they say it's cool, man. It's cool. I might play Dota 2 again, Mike. Those skins are valuable. That's right, Bright. Or you might not. I am in possession of a 2011 Minecon cape. There are not very many of them out there. It is that is digital wares that belongs to me. I get offers for, from people to buy them often, often, or buy it often. This is a way to do that, right? If the Ubisoft agreement permits resales, it does. It's even in the video, actually. Um, but never for enough. That's right, never for enough. The longer time goes on, I'm just like, I'm, I'm at that peak right now where it's like, I want $1,000 for it. And I know in like 10 years, I'll be like, just give me 20 bucks, man. <laughs> How do you sell your in-game NFT? Sell your game? No, you could sell list the item. Again, it, it's... I mean, I haven't seen their functionality, but the way that this will likely work is just like Steam's inventory. Just take... That's the thing. And that's the thing that baffles a lot of people. It's like, we already have infrastructure in to add all these things to games that don't require non-fungible tokens, right? They don't require them. But because NFTs exist and because it's the new hotness uh, and potentially pretty significant future use cases, um, that's where the money's going. That's how they're that's how they're shoehorning it in. Uh, now, I embed those NFT skins into five other games if they are compatible. Um, Ubisoft Quartz is literally just T a Steam CSGO system. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Except it just uses NFTs, which you purchase using uh, well, it's cryptocurrency. I don't think you can. You you can't purchase. I don't know how they sell it. Let me see. Of course, NFTs, Ubisoft Quartz. Let me see. Ubisoft Quartz. Let me see. I'm, I actually didn't look to see what you buy it for. What they're how they're selling it. Um, the resale. See, December 9th beta. December 9th. Okay, 9th, 12th, and 15th are the drops. Okay, so there's a drop a couple days ago. So we'll probably learn more of that soon. Um, is using something like Open Seas. Fuck yeah, like this. Ah, hey, there it is. Fuck. Oh, it's got hit refresh. It's gone. Damn it! It was just there! God, I should never refresh. I'm just so I'm too quick with it. Anyways, so we're not done yet. We're not done yet. That's not the end. Because Stalker 2 upcoming also said they're getting NFTs. Including one that lets you become an in-game meta human, which I believe is an NPC in the game. All right. This is very similar to, um, this is very similar to, uh, whenever you are at a certain tier on Kickstarter and they're like, we'll add you as an NPC in the game. Basically the same thing. And that's what I'm talking about is that they're taking existing, I guess, features or existing perks and they're just attaching NFTs to it. Because that's that's where a lot of big money is right now. People are throwing money on it. Now, within like two days, December 15th, one day, they already came out. And they said, dear stalkers, we hear you. You already know the rest. <laughs> they just need to not put the word NFT in it. It's that easy. But 
that's the thing, Jordan. They're putting the word NFT in it because they're getting the people who have money to burn in that space. They don't give a shit about you or me. They don't give a shit. You're going to buy the game. We already know you're going to buy the game. And you're going to bitch about whatever. What, who cares? Who cares when they can sell two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 worth just because they included an NFT in their game? Um, too bad the people who have the money to burn aren't the majority. Yeah, they don't need to be the majority. They really don't. No, that's the thing. They don't have to be the majority. It's, it's the one percenters, man. That's It's the whales. If 95% of people hate it and 5% are willing to throw, you know, to buy it, then guess what? They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about the 95%. Why? Why? Why would they? Why would they give up one or two yachts just to make 95% of the people happy? At the same time, maybe we'll look back on this and we'll say, they were a little too far ahead of their time. We weren't quite ready for NFTs and games. But what's the point of flexing in some game you own an NFT on if no one plays? Your fame is now pointless. Your flex is dead. That's true. Yeah. Everyone's going to be shoehorning NFTs. And shoehorn is the best word for it because it's not like anybody started making a game. Unless it's like open, unless it's like Sandbox or something like that. Uh, that is an actual game built on the premise of NFTs and cryptocurrency and play to earn and all that. But... Owning a piece of something in a game that's rare and hard to find is bragging rights. Like cause cosmetics, right? If nobody plays the game, then hopefully you sold before you got out. Just like cryptocurrency or any other stock, right? Hopefully you sold before you got out. That's how you that's how you basically stay afloat, I guess, if you want to continue recycling your money. Honestly, that's why I don't see the point of any real money transaction in a multiplayer game beyond the initial purchase. Yeah, I mean, everybody has different, I guess, different views on what they think is worth their money, right? Like, some people will spend a shitload of money to look, you know, special in a game. And if that game dies, they'll just shrug it off. But if that person could then turn around and sell that to somebody else and recoup some of the, some of the losses, then that's kind of cool, right? But that already exists. Again, it already exists. Like, I mean, if I have skins, if I have skins from whatever game, CSGO or stuff from TF2 or something from years back, like, I can sell those. Well, I don't know if I can do it legally anymore, but I could sell those. See, Star Citizen is so far ahead of this. Would you like to buy a ship, sir? Or Matt? I'm surprised that Star Citizen has not sent out an email talking about implementing some kind of NFT into this yeah exactly they just need to relabel them as nft ships yep um yes you can sell all that stuff from the dead game that you bought for five thousand for 18 cents it's true or you could try to sell it before you get out i mean that's that's this this is the same this this is the same concept that happens in any kind of investment that you do right if you invest in something that you plan on making a return on then you have to sell it before your return is gone right so, or at least sell it before you lose too much. So you can legally sell TF2 items, but it'll only give you funds for use on Steam. Oh, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so if you sell your $5,000 skin for 18 cents, that's on you. That's on, if you, if you bought Doge at 84 cents and you sold at 18 cents, that's on you. That's not on anybody else. <laughs> but you're right though. Like, there are other problems that could stem from this. People that don't understand that concept. Just like with cryptocurrency. People drop on a ton of money into crypto, and then they're like, cool, now it's going to make money, right? And then that's it. And then they walk away, and guess what? And their shit tanks, and that's it. Because they didn't they didn't play the game, or they didn't pick the right currency, or they got in when, like, their brother's uncle on Facebook hit you up on Messenger was like, yo, have you heard about blank crypto or coin? And then you got in after everybody else. <laughs> spot coin pot coin to the moon that's right you should be only invest in a game for personal enjoyment not to resell it's yes you usually but there you know to I me mean, if you can invest if you could invest in yourself and make a little bit of money after playing a game you can so soccer decided that they're not going to do it but this is this is i mean this is ubisoft and this is i mean stalker devs like i mean this is a um 
this is clearly becoming a thing faster than a lot of people are comfortable with, right? Isn't your brother's uncle also just your your own uncle? Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, man. Uh, <laughs> Look at this stock market. It used to be about buying a stake in a company and earning off the dividends. Now it's all about, yeah, that's right, it's all about day trading, boy. Big company like Ubisoft touching NFTs was not on my bingo card. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen to more. It's going to happen to more. More companies are going to get involved. We're going to see more in the NFT market. We're going to see microtransactions uh, that will give you an NFT. We already see, there's already, I, I mean, I, I, I don't have an example, but I want to say I've already seen this. Um, purchasing an NFT or purchasing a micro uh, a microtransaction in the game and then getting an NFT along with it. I mean, you could go see like Spider-Man Homecoming and get an NFT, whatever the fuck it is, right? So it's popping up everywhere. They're testing the market everywhere. They're trying to see what makes the money, what brings people in. And if they start, if they keep making money off of this, then they're going to keep doing it. And we will see free to play games or whatever box games <laughs> with a subscription, with a cash shop, with NFT cosmetics. We're going to see all that shit. They're going to nickel dime us to death. It's going to happen. It's not going to get better. They're not going to be like, okay, well, you know what? We'll go and back up a little bit and we'll kind of roll back on some of this nickel and diming shit because we feel bad for all of you guys who are giving us all your money. And we got all these yachts. I don't even know where to put all these yachts. I have so many yachts now. Fuck. They're totally not ever going to do that, guys. <laughs> it's only going to get worse because there's always going to be that 5% that's going to buy that shit no matter what it is. At least. And they're going to pay for it. And they're going to pay for all of us to continue dealing with it. It's almost like one of those things you have to just let happen. Like when you go into a game and there's a cash shop and you're like, well, I'm not going to spend anything in the cash shop. I'll just play the game. You can. Yeah. Just play the game. It's fine. Spider-Man NFT uh, of his left butt cheek. <laughs> I want a big company jump on NFT and it being the final nail in the coffin. There's no coffin. I assure you. I assure I I I am I am fair I'm certain. I'm fairly certain. Okay, not certain, certain, but I'm fairly certain that there is no nail in the coffin for NFTs. This is an uncontrollable thing that is quickly taking over. It's just run by a bunch of fucking bros right now, and they're annoying as fuck. Annoying as fuck. You can either get on the bandwagon or be left behind, bro. What the fuck? What the fuck? I was just asking. I was just wondering if you could give me more information. That's all. So many. So many people like that that ruin it for everybody else. Because there's a lot of people that are interested in new tech. They want to be involved in new tech. But when you have people like that who are like militant technologists, you know, like, fuck you, man. Like, get over yourself. Fuck. This is why Mike can't post on his photography Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> they have to push no 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 it's not it's my gaming side the value is the, 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 the photography twitter everybody there loves nfts okay they're like here's my new collection here's my new art and you know what some of it sucks but art is subjective but some of it really sucks but then there's stuff that's really good and that stuff, it's like, okay, cool. Like, that's, yeah, like, like one of them I saw, it was like, there, it was a real, like, this guy was a really good street photographer here in the Bay Area. And I actually was in, I was in a space last night. Um, and I was listening to this guy, and he's a street photographer, and he was talking about how he walked around and how he, like, collected, how he, you know, he basically stalked somebody. And there's, like, the thrill of doing this. So he doesn't really want to stalk them. He's just trying to get a really good picture and all this. And just the way that he told his story and what he did made me respect his art a little bit more. So I saw his uh, OpenSea account um, where he had some of his pieces, and they were beautiful pieces. Places I have seen a ton of times, right, through this guy's eye. It was beautiful. Um and so it's like, yeah, there is good art out there that's selling. And it was selling for like $800 or something like that, right? So like each individual piece was like a, an eighth of an Ethereum or something. So it's probably close to like 400 bucks or something like that. But, but still, like there's, there's, there is good art out there that you can pick up. But it depends on what the seller's rights, what the seller, uh, what the seller's uh, deal is in terms of like what rights you get to you you get whether it's you get the full size image or you could get a print or whatever or sell or whatever uh, legit Mike your art is good thank you doesn't really translate well to NFTs I don't think unless somebody wants to buy original nudes I'll happily sell copies of nudes I'll happily sell copies of nudes 
You, you don't have to own the original. I tried that once. Uh, I'll be that guy. What's NFT? I can't go back. I can't go back. We're too far gone now. But someone can get you. So NFTs, absolutely, absolutely something that's going to be hanging around for a while. 2022 is, is, is you're going to see more of it for sure. It's not, this is not something that's going to die right now. Okay. Uh, the fees are insane. I don't know how anybody makes any money doing this shit. Having done it myself. I don't know how anybody makes money off of it. Um, maybe they've come down, whatever, but, uh, I see the potential and I see game companies doing it. And so I, I, I could see that they're going to continue down this path. We will see more, um, we will see more of them like pop up in games throughout next year for sure. Um, NFT is a key value pair on a distributed database. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's a shame that open C wasn't open. Uh, actually I could probably show you, let's see. Uh, let's see. I could at the very least show you guys the official website for the uh, board ape yacht club. This is, you've seen these things probably floating around. I'm sure. Right. These ape, avatars anytime i see somebody with one of these fucking avatars i immediately think that they're probably a dick <laughs> they're probably a what you call a technocrat i'm not a militant technologist don't copy paste my monkey shit what i'll do it right now <laughs> watch watch right click save as boom look at that oh <laughs> DMCA. <laughs> I can't use it though. That's the funny thing. I can't actually use it somewhere because somebody might actually own the rights to it, right? I could put it here. We could talk about it because context and all that shit. But still, these people, these guys. Uh, so these things sell for like a stupid amount. Like it's a stupid amount. Let me see. Uh, how a three hundred thousand dollar board ape yacht club NFT accidentally sold for three thousand. Okay, well, yeah, they're selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. Um, just these pictures, just these little art pictures and they crank them out, just crank them out. It's just like a bunch of the same thing. Uh, it's over 3k. Then it was, worth, yeah. <laughs> if it's over 3k, then it's worth 3k. There you go. So, so all I can say is like, just get ready for more bullshit next year when it comes to nfts we're going to be fighting them in games when they start replacing functions that we've all read we've all you know fought before and then accepted and now we have to fight again like in-game cash shops on a box product that you purchase with a sub <laughs> we fought it and then we we're just like fuck we fucking got burned out and then they're going to replace that same feature with NFTs. Oh, they'll make another one. So you have two shops. You have a cash shop and you have an NFT shop. <sighs> so, yeah. Of course, NFT to unlock bonus level. <sighs> anyway, I'm just telling my, my uh, girlfriend, uh, Amy Doggy, that you're my favorite father figure on the internet and kind of call you my Twitch dad to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your <laughs> I'm flattered. <laughs> I hope I'm, I hope I'm a good hope I'm a good role model. Hi Amy. Welcome. I can be your daddy too. Just hang out. You'll be fine. Just 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 have a seat with everybody else. <laughs> daddy Mike. <laughs> oh hey Julian. Uh oh <laughs> Take your socks off. Get comfortable. <laughs> Take your socks off. <laughs> uh, thank you, Himes, by the way. Moving on. All right. Listen. Listen. This is the part I'm telling you guys have to be. We have to be careful. All right. Okay. Listen. Listen to this. Wise words here. You it's wrong button. Wise words here. If you're comparing the badness of two words and you won't even say one of them, that's the worst word. So, 
This week, we discovered that there is a word that we are not allowed to say. Now, on paper, it makes sense that we're not allowed to say this word. It's not daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Not even if it applies to you. I want to go. <laughs> yes, yes. So, Hassan Piker, who is a relatively well known uh, political pundit on Twitch, uh, he's definitely well known in some of the right wing circles. They view him as, as, uh, I guess the same way that people on the left view Tim Pool or something like that, or uh, what's 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 that what's that crazy guy's name with the fucking tinfoil hat? Oh man, I forgot his name already. <sighs> Quickly they fade. <laughs> that one, that one. There's a gift. Uh, the info one. Uh, uh, Alex Jones. That's his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the left's Alex Jones. I don't want to say that's fucked up. <laughs> but <laughs> but he got he got banned for saying. The word that starts with a C. Uh, Goddamn white people. Okay, that word. All right. That's the word he used. <laughs> and he got banned. Now, he wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only one that did, that got banned. There was like three of them involved and then a bunch of mods or whatever. Um, now, the word... Mike is in this light. You look white enough to say it. I look, I look white enough to say it anytime. <laughs> is the other C word okay? Oh, like cunt? Yeah, that word's fine. <laughs> I actually thought that cunt was worse. I thought it was worse. But no, the word, uh, the word uh, is a slur. Now. <clears throat> Growing up, growing up white on the outside, <laughs> I always, I always took advantage of it, right? I always took, I always took advantage of like being able to make fun of white people and nobody could say anything, right? I just, I, oh, everything, e goddamn white people. I can't tell you how many times I've said this, all right? All the fucking time. So, because to me, there's no systemic racism that involves white people. So there's no way you could bring them down, especially with a word like that. Okay. You can't, there's no weight to it. So for me, there's no weight. It's like, whatever. Did there have been a press? When? When? <laughs> it's almost, it's almost on the same level as calling somebody a cotton headed ninny muggin, ninny muggins. That's, it's about on par, par with that. To me. It's like a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> Scott's do it even worse. If anything, it's empowering. <laughs> what did you say? Cotton head and ninny muggins. Y'all don't watch Elf? Fucking Christmas, bitch. Damn. Say it three times faster? No, you guys are dumb. <laughs> you guys are fucking... God damn it. Ugh. You know what we're talking about? Don't worry, it's fine. Um, I got real close. Oh, man. <sighs> Sounds a little racist. It didn't sound racist when Will Ferrell said it, all right? It's fine. <laughs> Alf, not Alf, Elf. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys really thought? Man, I guess, I guess in the discussion, I guess you guys could really hear that, huh? Well, I didn't say it. I didn't even come close to saying it. Jesus. Just start just saying random C words. Captain. No, come on. <laughs> so there's uh there are rules about this. There are rules in the Twitch guidelines. It says hateful conduct or harassment are not allowed on Twitch. Hateful conduct is content or activity that promotes or encourages discrimination, denigration, harassment, or violence based on the following protected characteristics. Race. And we could just stop there. Because technically, yeah, the word does involve race, even though it has negative weight. <laughs> even though it's like has no weight. 
whatsoever, it's still considered a slur. So technically, yes, he does deserve to be banned. He did. He and he continues to. I mean, now I think he's saying that, you know, he doesn't want to necessarily die on this hill, but he sure as fuck was dying on this hill over and over again by posting videos of him eating Ritz crackers, posting a video, uh, being on a show with uh, Ethan, uh, Ethan from H3H3 uh, and Amaranth, where they're sitting in a hot, uh, inflatable hot tub full of Ritz crackers, eating them <laughs> while discussing, I don't even know what. So he's definitely took a, taken this and uh, <laughs> about as far as he can, but now he wants back. Seven day ban. See you in seven days. That's right. Hassan giving us daily updates day four. Yeah, he's, he's been playing, uh, was it Elysium? Was it Elysium? Uh, something Elysium. Uh, I played the game too, and I, I forgot. It's a very story-driven RPG. Disco Elysium, that's right. And he's been saying he's loved it. So I've heard it's pretty good too. Uh, watch by there, going to politically correct our boxes of Ritz and town. <laughs> Baked flower product. Uh, so you can say as long as you say Ritz before. No, 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 no. Because somebody did get banned, and they were saying, they were saying, oh, I love eating Ritz crackers with cheese. And they were like spamming it. So it's like, again, going back to this. When we're applying the community guidelines, we very specifically take context and intent into account. So remember that your intent matters. Matters. If you're sitting there saying, I love Ritz crackers, I love Ritz crackers, over and over again, then, <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> your intent matters there <laughs> see context intent so he kind of deserved it he definitely did the equivalent of finding a stick realizing he could poke things with it then poke it till he got punched typical that's exactly it that's exactly what happened and like Frank Horst said it was kind of a self it's kind of a you know a, 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 a vacation for him because he's workaholic never stopped streaming um, but uh, what about Jacob's brand is it okay sure I don't know what it is but <laughs> The thing with Hassan is that he explained the meaning of it on stream, then literally said, "You, f yeah, 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 they continued stun locked another three days. Yeah. No, 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 it's true. Like, you know, he did abuse it. He absolutely abused it. And then he's going to try to say that, you know, because for the same reasons that I, I feel like it has no weight. It's like, I feel like everyone should be able to say it. I don't feel like, like, like this. Not, nobody has said that word and actually meant to tear somebody down because of it. Nobody's actually tried to oppress somebody using that word. Since Bernie Mac and what's his face, uh, Matt da Matt Damon in uh, in Ocean's Eleven, that's it. That was the last time I've ever heard it used, and that was a joke. Then it was a con. <laughs> Daddy, Mike, call you. Stop it. <laughs> if you say it three times in front of a mirror, you summon a Twitch ban. <laughs> Now you need to do a stream with all of you put Ritz and various other bake. No, no, no. I'm not taking that risk. All right. Twitch is too trigger happy for me. All right. Too easily triggered. I'm not doing it. That's because we don't give a shit. So it, how does what? See what? Can't talk about instant rice or a box of instant grits. Nope. Twitch twitches. I heard it like once a year ago. And it was so bad because the guy clearly didn't know how to. If somebody called me. If somebody called me that, I would just be like, like really confused, not offended, just like of all the words, of all the words you could have just pulled out your ass, you use that one. But technically it is a slur. So technically he deserved a seven day ban. Probably one, probably one of the things that summed it up pretty nicely for me initially is this. Even though it doesn't really, really apply, it kind of does. Let me catch up on this text here. Let me see. Hold on. Honestly, though, where's it? Honestly, though, it doesn't matter if uh, if your race has been oppressed or not. The law should be about equality. Therefore, I'm not actually opposed to Twitch's decision. Um, really hates how so many people try to straw man that people are equating the C word with the N word when literally nobody's making the argument. They're sidestepping the argument that uh, being a bigot towards a specific person is just not okay, even though in society at large, the C word has no weight. That's right. So, like I said, in my personal opinion, like, if somebody uses the C word around me, I'm like, ha ha, you use that word that nobody's used since the fucking 1800s. <laughs> like, for me, it's a fucking joke, right? 
I didn't hear how he said it, but from what I've heard, it's like he said it, he said it in a way that he thought he was being funny, but if you replace that with the N-word, it wouldn't be funny. Uh, see, I was calling, uh, it was called after he was firing somebody, a legit told the guy, go home and think about your life, son, and the guy was 20 years older than me. What the fuck? What? <laughs> You ever get the old Mexican slurs? Oh, yeah. Oh, my friends just call me that shit all the time. All the time. I was the wetback friend. That was me. <laughs> all the fucking time. But it's okay. My friend was a Polak. So we always went back and forth like that. So that's all we could do. You can say, is that a bad word too? I was talking about myself. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard anyone actually use it outside of a stand-up comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Or like I said, like joking. Like jokingly. Now, I've never heard anybody say it. Um, maliciously. It was always like friends, like friends call them, you know, call me names or whatever. Um, so I can tell you how I respond. You're damn right. I'm one of great with sharp cheddar. Exactly. Someone's called me that series. I'm questioning what to decide that they popped out of time machine from. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. So, so like this, this, I kind of get this immediate reaction here where it's like, and this was Hassan's kind of initial, like kind of gut response. He was just like, like, why the fuck are they jumping on me for this when all this other stuff runs rampant on their sites? And we see this, too. We see this. We, we know about hate raids and gamer words, right? Uh, we know this stuff happens often. But can we really, can we equate these things? Like, when we, when, can we equate hate raids to a Hassan saying the C word? Can we equate, you know, uh, a random streamer who has, like, 16 people watching him uh, saying... The N word with his friends who are also dropping the N word, and they're not, and they're, or they're white, right? Uh, <laughs> even if they're black, you know, are there rules against that? I don't know if that's the case, but still, like, are there rules against? That? I have no idea. Also, the sign has tens of thousands of viewers. He's not just some random streamer who uses C word. Does Twitch want to tolerate big streamers normalizing bigoted terms? It's not that. Yes, that's on, that's my point. That's my point. It's like, is is it the same? Can we compare them? My initial reaction is like this. It's like, man, like a Twitch. Twitch sits there for so long and like this shit goes on forever. Hate raids on like the transgender, transgender community and all this shit like it happens constantly. Still happens. Right? And we still see like they try to fix it with like various login things and all that stuff. Uh, but then we see, you know, it's like, oh, just a crack on oh, See you later. Uh, it felt like this at first. But then when you look into it and you read and you read the rules, the rules do say you can't do it. So yes, I do think that the ban was deserved. Um, I do think that it's an easy ban for Twitch. It's an easy ban for Twitch, right? They're not going to be able to hunt down the smaller, you know, 10 to 15 uh, viewer um, or less than that. Like, they're not going to be able to hunt them down because those people are not going to appear at the top of, of Reddit, right? Where all the advertisers can see. Okay, so it's a deserved ban that they had to do. That they absolutely had to do. And Hassan absolutely, absolutely... Poked the bear. 100% poked the bear. So, Hassan should definitely be the one that would look at this and say, maybe I fucked up. Kind of like the time when he said in 2019 he was going to week-long ban for saying America deserved what happened on 9-11. Maybe every couple years he just says something really stupid so he could get a vacation. Maybe. But don't worry, he'll be back. He'll be back. He's just playing Disco Elysium right now, enjoying his time off. That's because it's easy to ban one guy. It's hard to figure out how to stop hate raids. Yeah, that's why it's insane. It's hard to equate the two because a hate raid is a little bit considerably different than a streamer saying something. It's not as cut and dry. But my initial reaction, person again, like emotionally, I'm just like, what the fuck? They banned it for this, but they don't do anything about this. That's what it feels like, right? And I understand it's not the same, but it's hard for me not to make that to make that equation. So the yeah, it's hard. Uh, it's actually nuts to me, Frey. At first, I'm hearing it, but I live under a rock a lot. Well, if, this, if the simp of Virgil words are banned, is Virgil still banned? Simp's not really banned, right? Nah, you could say simp. Fucking Pokey said simp. You just can't use it. You just can't use it in a derogatory way. Huh. But. If you talk about, like, if you talk about, is there a derogatory, apparently. <laughs> if you talk about words that have weight based on, you know, how you use them in terms of whether or not they're a slur, um, then I would say that Karen 
calling somebody a Karen should also apply. Technically, because a Karen, predominantly white women, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever, somewhere around there. So calling somebody a Karen, you're kind of using it because of the race, kind of. Yeah, but you complain about being called a Karen, you're probably a Karen. See? See? You could swap those words out. Swap those words out with Cracker. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Karen refers to a personality, not a trait. Mm. You, 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 you're, you're taking a lawyer approach, man. I don't know. You've seen some women of color being called Karens. I dare you to find me one example. <laughs> we all know. Okay. You, you can look. But we all know if I say some fucking Karen did this in your head, you're thinking, okay, whites, probably 40 something, maybe a little overage. I'm oh, sorry, overweight. Okay. Doesn't have to be. It's added bonus. Haircuts a bonus. Those are all bonus point items. Franz, a box of wine. That's right. Because the Franz stuff sucks. The other stuff is the better stuff, the, the one the gold box. What do they just call Karen, though? Ka oh, God, Karen. <laughs> I was thinking of a dumbass facial sketch that come to mind. You're just thinking of a dumbass? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have three non-white Karens from today alone. Work in international customer service, and you'll see them everywhere. Well, not everyone works in international service. Again, it's not about it, 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 your experience working TSA or whatever. Where you meet Karens of all shapes and sizes and genders all day is different from what the common person's assumption of what a Karen is. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, if you can't say the C word because it implies race, then you shouldn't be able to say the K word because it also implies race. See, uh, Aurora says, uh, the weight of words depends highly on your own personal experiences on top of culture in general. My, we my Mexican, sorry, I skipped the line. My Mexican friends uh, on, in SoCal have a different relation to wetback than the ones who grew up in Kentucky. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what is this? What is this video? What did you ask? What is it? Hold on. I, I can't just play shit. Let's see. Karen attacked with dolls of plays and gets arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, just just because he did go, he did go and find it. It still doesn't prove me wrong. <laughs> it still does. It still doesn't. It's it's all it does is just show that you found an example. You dug and you found an example. But we all know the fucking truth. When somebody says Karen, they're not talking about a person of color. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, the person's gonna be referencing a white lady. All I'm saying is that probably where we draw the line, the slippery slope. <laughs> Frankly, I should be able to call anyone I want a fucking Karen. All right, don't take that right away from me, at all. Don't tell. Don't nah. There might be my bias showing. Has Mike already talked about stalker to NFT fat? Yes, I did. Yep. Yep. So Asan will be back. Asan will be back. You guys will be happy, right? Be good. My bias showing fucking Karens. <clears throat> You so late. You say well, I, I would like to speak to your manager, then Mike. We can't have this Karen talk. That's right. Yeah, you're Ken. Wait, isn't Ken like the male Karen? Ken, Ken, and Karen, or is it Kevin? No, it's Ken. Mike, you're being a real Karen right now. <laughs> yeah. Is Chad the same thing? That no, Chad. Chad is no. It's not Chad. Chad is Chad is uh, uh, uh Chad is very different. It's like um. Um, <clears throat> how do you describe it? It's not, it's not it, Kyle. Maybe it's Kyle. Maybe, maybe it's Kyle. Yeah. Chat, chat, but chat also implies white. Oh <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, there's not enough history to back this up, I guess. That's why Karen, Karen, Karen will go for another, you know, maybe a couple decades and then eventually will come around and say, no, you can't call people Karen. That's rude. Cause it implies race. Chad is cool and manly. Yeah. Fucking Chad. What a Chad. What a Chad. <laughs> Chad is a cool dude. 
Chad is the muscle bro that fucks all the chicks. Yeah, it's a fucking Chad right there. <laughs> all right, moving on. How about a jock? Well, that's just a, that's just a type. That's a type of Chad. Uh, <laughs> wait, what happens then? Oh, it happened to all the women uh, named what? It has all the women named Karen? Well, that's her actual name. That's her actual name. So they, they, they yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Totally fine. Students saw my college ID pic and called me a Chad. Dude! Yes! Yo, your college ID picture really does. You do look like a Chad. I, it doesn't look like you at all. Like, it looks like you, but it doesn't. It's like the Chad version of you. <laughs> they made the name what it was. <laughs> Jock is a subcategory of Chad. There you go. It's a classification. It's a classification. All right. <clears throat> speaking of Chads, speaking of Chads, Square Enix, the makers of Final Fantasy fourteen. Sporticus Chaticus. <laughs> Uh, they have stopped selling. They've stopped selling the game. They just can't do it anymore. They've given up. They've uh, they've decided to move on, uh, and sh stop selling new copies of the game because the shit is just too motherfucking popular. Too motherfucking popular. Seriously, Final Fantasy fourteen has gotten so big that they cannot scale up fast enough. You know why they can't scale up fast enough? Because they can't find hardware. Because of shit like this. Okay? These are all 3080s, I think. Is that what it said? I think these are all 3080s. Chilling here. Maybe 3070. Let me see. 3070s. Okay, just 3070s. They're cheaper, right? <clears throat> Imagine how many Final Fantasy instances we could run in here. <laughs> And this is one out, yeah, one out of four. Somebody doxed this guy's building, by the way. Somebody found it and doxed it. They post it's all over Twitter now. Um, but yeah, <sighs> they're making NFTs. This so this this is a crypto crypto mine. Uh, basically, it's just a warehouse has been converted to to, uh, to to hold and store. As you can see, tons and tons and tons of video cards, and all they do is crunch numbers all day, crunch numbers all day, um, and. What they do, I don't know about this place in particular, but what they do is they mine some shit coin, some stupid fucking coin, chin hot coin, uh, and then they get online and they start pumping it up. They're like, fuck yeah, I mean, buy this coin, man. Get in early. We've got some drops giving away some free crypto. It's going to be great. And then they fucking pump and dump that shit. And then they turn around and take that money they earn and they buy real coin, like, like fucking Bitcoin or Ethereum or something or Doge. <laughs> so, so this is this is one of those this is a farm basically and they're not mining bitcoin here that'd be a huge waste of power and money at least uh, they're running planetary simulations for uh for unis that would have a noble purpose what are you talking about my fucking coin is gonna save the world come on actually my coin's gonna save the world so <clears throat> squeenix says that yeah they can't they're trying to they're trying to source they're trying to source fucking hardware for their servers. And maybe it doesn't include, you know, a room full of 3070s. But they're still struggling to get the resources they need in order to do it. Now, when you think about why can't they find server component X? And then you try to understand that from like, well, it's because it's not because the board is missing or because they can't find a processor. It's because the components that go into making those pieces, those individual components, like the, 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 the mats that go into crafting the component that you're looking for is being used or sold or it's scarce because it's being used for other purposes, whether it's cell phones or whether it's fucking rooms full of 3070s right uh <clears throat> capacitors resistors cobalt related stuff like yeah like this this there's scarcity there uh and it's undeniable that some of those resources go to uses that 
you know, like that room full of fucking 3070s. It's like, well, maybe, maybe some of those components, those crafting materials could have been used for something else, right? Uh, and this is a time where the mats are already scarce. That's right. Uh, even stop making cars. It's true. How do crypto bros sleep at night? They wipe, their, they wipe their tears with their coin, with their digital coin. That's all. I don't know how you do that, but I'm sure you can find a way. Just shake a USB cable on their face. Ah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they do. <laughs> you know what they do? You know what they do? They hang, they hang out in Twitter spaces and shill. That's what they do. They don't sleep. They just shill all night until the early morning and then they get started again. AWS has been running out of capacity for certain server types and their scale is probably unmatched. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's true. Completely unmatched. Um, <clears throat> and yet there's also car shortages. Like, you, like your used car, if you have a used car, it sells for more today than it did two years ago. Right? Like, that's that's pretty gnarly. <laughs> like, it makes me upset that I sold my fucking used Jetta last year. I could have held on to it. It made a fucking killing. Wipe your tears with your literal earth-destroying math-solving machines and producing no tangible value to anyone. Well... I mean, is it no tangible value to anyone? No, that's the thing. Is it? I mean, if is it? An, is it? I don't know. I don't know. Also, is it really? Martha, I'm gonna need that link again. Uh, sorry. Is 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 it? Is it uh, uh, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. But yes, no, you're right. Actually, Martha, I'll look it up right now. Cause that ties into what we're talking about. Wait, no, go my way. Going back. Going back. Going back. Going back. Okay, we'll, we'll put this up, but we gotta go back to this. We gotta finish with, with the fucking Squeenix, man, because they're doing good things. They deserve the recognition. <clears throat> so. <sighs> they are giving you seven days game time. Uh, they're they're halting box sales. They're trying to get used to get a hold of their distributors, halt box sales, and they're not selling the digital copy of the, um, of the base game anymore. You could still buy... You can still buy the expansions and everything, but that's about it. Uh, oh, is it 21 now? Holy shit. Let me see. Uh, we recently granted 70. Oh, when I would grant this is 14. Oh, my notes were older than this article. <laughs> All right. So, yes, yes, it's true. Sorry. 21 days. Yeah. 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 No, no. It's, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty big. Deal. I mean, basically almost a month, basically almost a month um, of free game time. So, yes, good on Squeenix. Now, to go back, I know we're going to keep going back to this, but to go back to crypto stuff, sorry. But um, this is this is a pretty big deal. Uh, gaming giant Nexon. Fuck. Get out of here, ads. Uh, start accepting Bitcoin, Ethereum for in-game purchases. So this is not NFT related, but it's also, but it is worth noting that this is, uh, uh, that this is being implemented in a, I mean, Nexon is not a small game company, right? It's just not Indie Dev Studio. This is huge. Uh, and Doge, that's right, and Doge. Although it doesn't reflect on my on my, on my my charts, though, not yet. So hopefully that picks up. People start buying some, some Nexon shit. Um, <clears throat> most currency is only worth the value that we uh, as a people place on it. Uh, a shame most people don't understand that, though. I understand that. You guys got to put more value into Doge so I can sell it, please, okay? Um, but yes, yeah, so... They're going to be accepting for microtransactions, uh, various cryptocurrency. This is this is going to continue to happen, and with it again is going to come NFTs. Nobody wants it to happen, but it's not up to you. It's up to that five percent that's willing to shell out the bucks for it. Stop shilling Doge. I'm not shilling. This is the fucking next. That's the next big coin. Get out of here. Everyone buy and burn Shiba Inu. <laughs> <laughs> Drive my Doge up with your in-game purchases. That's right. Please. Please. It only cost you an extra $300 that you can purchase within a week. So, uh, and why is Exxon accepting crypto? Because they bought $100 million worth of crypto. No, they said. They said that has nothing to do with their Bitcoin. They, come on. They, no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't lie, Jason. They would Come on. <laughs> but it's true. They did say that has nothing to do with their Bitcoin investment. Tencent bought Turtle Rock. I, I I don't even report on Tencent acquiring companies anymore because they've 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 purchased like or acquired like one company every three days last year or this year. Like they've just been. I'm not gonna report on all that shit. They're taking over. 
I mean, I worked for ten cent before. For fuck's sake, all right. Everybody, everybody has done something that's like, it's like fewer degrees to ten cent than Kevin Bacon. Okay, I need to find an updated chart of who ten cent owns these days. <laughs> normal currency, uh, <clears throat> normal currency. We'll make a good, uh, good on our promise to give you return on your lending because our economy is strong. Crypto, uh, uh, it's worth something because. Uh oh, it moved. Sorry, uh, it's worth something because it was worth because it's worth something. Please keep buying, bro. Don't miss out, bro. It's not based purely on speculation, bro. Trust me. <laughs> well, all all we need is for people to start accepting it as payment, and then all of a sudden it's gonna have value. That's all. Hi, babe. Um, did you need something? I'm Ryan Miller News. I oh my dog. Donut, what's up? Up, say hi, up, hello. Next up, easier to find a chart of who Tencent does not own. Exactly, I know, oh my gosh. Oh, you smell so good. Oh, he got it bad today. Oh my God, I forgot. Oh, oh you smell so good, Donut. He really does smell great. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss, mama, mama. Thank you. Right, go play. <sighs> Bye, Doge. Uh, next up, <laughs> Akusa Winners Ban. Honestly, got to respect Ten Cent's hustle, though. Uh, what better way to build a bridge between East and West than by owning both sides of the bridge? <sighs> <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, ouch. That's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, he found it. Ten cents metaverse. Okay. So let's see if we can follow this. Thank you, Martha. Premium social media, virtual worlds, uh, e commerce, democratization, adoption of decentralized, distributed, and remote productivity tech. Yes, they own a few things. Oh, gross. <laughs> Fucking everything. Yeah, it's true. Just something that, just a list of th stuff they don't un uh, own would be so much. Uh, more digestible. How much of do they own? Oh, it's not. Uh, I think the way that worked, that that uh, Venn diagram worked, is if it was in the circle or like near to the center, they own more of it, um, or something like that. But yeah, no, they don't own. They don't own enough to make decisions. We know that much. They own enough to influence. So I see. Tencent is actually a, probably a company that could build a metaverse and actually feel feel like a world of stuff. You know, I have a whole bunch of links that I'm setting aside about Facebook's metaverse because as I've been exploring Twitter spaces and talking to people in that space uh, who are participating in Facebook metaverse for whatever reason it is, uh, I'm learning more about it. Um, I'm learning that it is a shittier version of VR chat that is somehow more popular. Okay, that's what I'm learning. Um, and that Facebook is hinging their future on it, or Metaverse, or Meta is hinging their future on it. Anyways, uh, I have some other, I have some links that I've set aside that might be for something um, later. Um, you talk about Horizon, me? I was talking about, I was talking about the stuff that I was. What was that? My links were uh, for Metaverse. Let me see. Uh, let me see Metaverse. Is there is there is there more than one metaverse? Play my first ever concert in metaverse. Uh, let me see, Justin Bieber metaverse. Boeing wants to build the next airplane in metaverse. Are these not Facebook metaverse? Anyways, uh, we'll wait for that. But <clears throat> Darnell and metaverse when? I know, huh? You haven't heard the Boeing one? Yeah, no, I, I just set it aside from now. But maybe the Horizon, that China Metaverse clone? Maybe, yeah. Every company is using Metaverse now to drown out Facebook control of the term. Oh, how funny. Okay, so yeah, I'll have to dig a little bit deeper. Anyways, I set all that stuff aside. Um, oh, the chart for tents also includes Zam? Yeah, once upon a time. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, moving on. Moving on, moving on. Is it Metaverse the new Facebook thing that you get, uh, you get groped in VR? Yes. Well, I mean, unless it's another metaverse we're talking about, but yeah, the one that I saw, the, see the videos on, it looks like the Facebook one. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So, um, we have uh, uh, we have a new contender for live streaming platform trying to take on Twitch. There's more to this, so try to jump ahead, okay? Tick 
TikTok. TikTok test PC game streaming app that could let it take on Twitch. So if you're somebody who uses TikTok, especially if you're in games, right? You know, you like games and shit. You've probably already seen it. There's a lot of video game content popping up on there. What usually happen is they'll they'll organize the page so that way it's like the camera's up here or something and the gameplay is like down here on your phone, right? So like, let's say this is it. So it'd be like person, reaction cam, and then boom, 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 right? Um, <clears throat> stream the 10 seconds or less. Martha, you got to get on you gotta get a TikTok. You got like two whole minutes worth of stuff. Um, but... They, uh, they, they put it out. There's been a couple screenshots that have been floating around. Um, TikTok Live Studio. This is what it looks like. You could go through and you can set up your FPS. I mean, all the basic and, like, I mean, like, this is pretty good, pretty good software here uh, that you could use to just go streaming uh, on... Well, okay, those are emotes. Thank you for including those. Uh, uh, on TikTok, if you, if you so please. Um, but... As some of you guys are alluding to, alluding to, turns out, underneath everything, it's fucking OBS. It's an illegal fork of OBS. It, it does not abide by the GPL license rules uh, or anything like that. Uh, kind of like TikTok pulling a slobs. Yeah. So it's not weird, but I feel like there's somehow there's more trolls over there than here. I, you know, I, I've 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 been on TikTok for a while, just like as a viewer, and overall, it's a very positive experience. Like it really is. It's like it's it's a nice relief from from Twitter. When I go to like explore stuff on TikTok, like I'm not faced with like a bunch of like you know doom scrolling, angry fucking people like I am on Twitter. When I hit the explore button on Twitter, it's because I'm looking for a fight. All right. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, bust it again. So yeah, pretty much it's just OBS with with a new face. And that's it. Um, and they pull it up here. They pull up the examples you can see where it's at. See, overall, uh, overall, totally, I love it. Some of the comments, some of the comments are off of though. Dang, really? I haven't seen all the comments. Well, I, I, I don't know. Everybody's for you page is different, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, is this all about music tutorials? He does not go well with the game streams. No, 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 no. But people are putting like actual game content. I mean, where's Ryback? Isn't Ryback on fucking? I think Ryback's on Instagram. But um, uh, you know, he might be a good example to show, just in terms of you want to see like how the content's formatted, uh, because that's important to see like how how is this content delivered on a vertical phone, right? Um, Ryback's done. He posts clips to. Um, so, well, okay, it's, it's streaking the image, but you get the gist, though. Uh, effectively, this is what it looks like, except you get more of the picture here. Um, so, <clears throat> people post highlights just like this, and it gets fucking, it, I mean, it gets fucking views. So, Ryback's already all over it, man. Man of the future right there. <laughs> so, yes, TikTok, TikTok software really is just a copy of OBS. The OBS biz dev, though, says, says this is, so he's talking about, uh, 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 they are required to do so. This is one of TikTok would do the same, talking about OBS using desktop streams of open source fork, blah, blah, blah. So they basically have to have an open source fork on, uh, on GitHub of OBS. And then it says, I wonder if TikTok would do the same. So it says they're required to do so on, based on the OBS license, which is GNU new GPL version two. OBS in theory could take them to court if they don't provide all the source code freely available online with the same license. And, and this is the actual biz dev for OBS. And he says, this is the correct answer. That said, we have a, we have a commitment to dealing with GPL violations in good faith. And in the case of TikTok slash ByteDance, we would be happy to to have a friendly working relationship with them as long as they comply with the license. How much more popular right out the gate would streaming to TikTok be if they had partnered with OBS? Because even if you don't use OBS to stream, you know of OBS, right? So if you saw that TikTok was partnering with OBS to make a custom, you know, slobs like, um, or like the Reddit streamer, then people would be like, oh, I can stream to TikTok now? Hmm. Instead of this completely separate app that when they say, oh, TikTok's got a streaming app, oh, so what? I don't stream on TikTok. So 
from the get-go, it was kind of a bad business approach where they kind of missed out. But there's still hope here, which is why, I mean, this is a good biz dev here, right? Like he's saying that they approach GPL uh, um, violations in good faith because they want to they, they want to create a business uh, um, relationship with these guys. I got confused OBS split into several versions. I don't know which one to even use. You just go to OBS site and just download the one that's right down on the front page. Project. Uh, front page. Boom. Front page. Windows, bam, download, done. <laughs> there you go. So there's opportunity here for a new approach for TikTok, or they could just ignore it and I don't know, maybe nothing will happen. Who knows? Um, <laughs> OBE Studio, then <laughs> that works too. OBS Studio, yeah, OBS Studio, OBS, whatever. All the, uh, anyways, um, not trusting TikTok. TikTok has been busted for things in the past, like copying what's on your clipboard or something like that. Uh, Apple caught them doing that. And then nothing really happened. Of course, of course, TikTok too big, man. But if you're interested in streaming on TikTok, TikTok uh, you have options there using the uh, OBS friendly code or player or whatever streamer uh, to set up your streams and everything. Um, has anybody actually watched the live stream on TikTok? It's boring. Like, you're so used to going through TikTok and just like one video gets right down to business. They're super short. And then you get into, and then you, then you swipe into a stream, a random stream. And it's just somebody sitting there talking and nothing's happening. There's no context. There's no overlays. People don't know how to stream on TikTok. They don't know how to stream on TikTok. They, they just set up their phones and point it at themselves, which is why TikTok is and ByteDance are trying to get some kind of software together so that way they could support all this cool, like all these cool features that we as PC streamers have enjoyed for so long. Overlays, alerts, chat overlays, shit, like all kinds of stuff. TikTok has zoomer mentality. You can't boomer, you can't do boomer media on it. <clears throat> no, I mean, but no, but they do have this content on there though. So there's a guy talking to a camera in an empty room. This is way more exciting than the shit that I've seen. Blank wall, blank wall, talking. The camera's up here. Like when they do TikToks, it's like it's like it's on. It's just different. When they make a little videos. It's different. But this, they don't do anything cool like this. Shit, shit. But would they spend the cash? What cash they have to spend? They just got to make the player. Can you do hot tub streams on TikTok? They're really, really. They're really strict on that stuff. They're really strict on that stuff. You can't, you can't, yeah, you can't. Mm. <laughs> How long until uh, Steam Deck? Wait, Stream Deck, Stream Deck. Steam Deck or Stream Deck? Oh, Stream Deck. Oh, yeah. Oh, it would be like instantaneous, right? The second somebody makes a plugin for it, especially if it works, if, I mean, if it's based off OBS. <laughs> It'd be really easy. <laughs> all the scrutiny they've been under the last couple of years, I imagine they would. Uh, the Karens are out of force on there. You'll get insta banned. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's true. You can't. You can't get away with shit on TikTok. And they just ban your account. There's no appeals. Just gone. Just gone. They don't give a shit. So, so yeah, TikTok busted. We got our last bits of news here. This one, I'm a little excited for. Because I didn't like the game overall, but I did like the first act. Inscription is releasing, uh, or they have, on beta right now. And I actually, uh, I, I loaded it up myself so I could check it out. Um, oh, fuck, not this weekend, because I'm gonna be gone. Um, but they have a roguelike expansion uh, on beta right now for the first act. So... I won't say what happens after the first act, but you've all seen this this gameplay here where it's a deck builder and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a good, like this is a good solid deck builder. But then they move you on for this because it's a story driven game. So they move you on from this. So people are like, no, we need that act one to be a separate game or something. And they've obliged on, on the, uh, uh, it's called Casey's Mod. That's what that. It's not a mod. It is called that because they're very meta in this game. Um, I was super happy to see this after buying it on the holiday sale. Yeah. So like Gwent, I've never played Gwent, but it does have cards. 
<laughs> so how long before they bring NFTs into the game? Yeah. Uh, hey. Mmm. Okay. A rare mode of B being mad after Act One. Yeah. A a everything after Act One, I hated. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, no, like I, the rest of the game, I was just like, oh, come on. It was just not, for me, it was just not good. It was, it was, it was okay. The first act though, mwah, perfect, perfect. And last, lastly, and this is because I know you guys, I know you guys, but we have ourselves a, whoa, uh, yeah. A new VR game coming soon. <laughs> so among us is building a uh, a VR studio. Or oh, sorry, VR. Sorry, fuck. Sorry. Corey, shut up. Uh, they're building a VR version of the game. It's a, it's a standalone. i like to see you play Inscription. I already played it. It sucked. The first act's great, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're building a standalone, so it's not compatible with the existing versions, uh, uh, version of Among Us that's going to be in VR. And I am excited. Excited because I just got all my shit hooked up. And I know that we like to play some sus games here. I don't think we have enough people to fill. We don't have enough people to fill a two-dimensional version of Among Us. But it doesn't mean that we don't. There's no public rooms we can't get into and have some fun. And um, I'm probably gonna do that. No, I'm not gonna talk about Doctor Disrespect, stupid fucking studio. So what? He's gonna make another fucking Call of Duty. No one fucking cares. Shut up. Shut. Up. It's called 12 a.m. at 12 a.m. And guess what? They're not paying. They're not paying for uh, for testers. Okay. You know who gets to be the testers? You. That's right. You get to come in and test everything from the get-go. You can be part of the process. We don't want to pay QA. No way. We want you. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I capture everything there, Corey? Does that sound about spot on? Is that good? I think that's about accurate, I think. <laughs> that, there, that's all that's needed to be said. <laughs> That's all you wanted. That's all you wanted. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I need the sunglasses. That's right. I need the sunglasses. Uh, and that's it, though. That's all we got. <laughs> Did you just challenge to see if we could fill up a full VR Among Us game? Yes. Yes, we should. We should absolutely do that. I think that would be amazing. Every part of any process of a game that actually, uh, for a game that actually releases. Beta is testing. Nothing new there. Well, no, no, this, this is, this is, if you read it, it's like extreme alpha stuff. Like the stuff that, that they're saying that you can test, it's like recoil or something. And like little, like little things that maybe they think that it sounds enticing to people to be able to get in really like that early. Whoa, man, I'm testing like how quickly the gun comes up. Whoa, that's rad. But that's stuff that should happen when you QA your game. Yeah. They want you to QA their game. Exactly. Exactly. VR Among Us equals my wallet screaming to actually get a VR setup. Well, you don't have to, but you should. <laughs> get a used one, man. It's fine. My, I, got, I got an old ass Vive. It's still fine. The big ass clunky dildos in each hand. It's totally fine. <laughs> Walking around all day, fucking jerking off fucking two dudes. Awesome, man. That's it. That's all we got today. For our Christmas edition. It's only Christmas edition because we have lights and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the cannon lens for VR? What? No. So what? <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Mike B, aka Phony Chat. My lovely chat. I'm glad we got through this episode without being banned. <sighs> <laughs> Among Us has given us that reason to get VR. There you go. We'll work with the Rift. It better fucking work with all existing and used uh, systems. Like, I would think the Rift would work fine. I would think uh, um, the Vive will work fine. Should work fine. Anyways, not yet. Yeah, not banned yet. Anyways, we'll see. No, you can't say it, Ra. God damn it. Don't fucking do it. 
Don't fucking do it. Do it in the YouTube comments. All right, that's it. My name is Mike BAK Phony. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. Chat, hang out for a little bit. We'll see you guys in a minute.